Three and a half years ago, a 27-year-old woman presented with a progressive loss of vision in the left eye from 2020 to 2040 over the previous four months. On clinical examination, we noted, in addition to papillary dispersion, the presence of several interpapillomacular subretinal bubbles, which were causing elevation of the macular retina. These bubbles became heavily and lengthily impregnated with fluorescein at angiography. OCT confirmed the position of these bubbles between the two retinal layers. Six months later, the visual acuity having dropped to less than 2100, we decided to pierce these bubbles in order to try to obtain reapplication of the macular retina by means of gas. During this procedure, on entering the large bubble, we noticed that it was in fact surrounded by a wall. So we decided to dissect out this wall. We chose to perform the ablation of this pseudocyst using a forceps, as this seemed the easiest approach. The pierced cyst empties itself into the vitreous cavity. We can see very well that its walls contain blood vessels, which bleed when cut. Then we decided to remove the other cysts. Why not? Oh, what a lovely bunch. Histology showed that these lesions were in fact papillary pseudocysts with no evidence of malignancy, bordered by a proliferation of pigment epithelial cells in a single layer, centered by vascular axes, and containing exudate in abundance. At a higher magnification, we can see clearly epithelial cells, rich in pigment and arranged like tombstones, as well as blood vessels. This papillary pigment epithelial proliferation is probably secondary to a neovascular invasion of the anterior surface of Brooks membrane from the juxtapapillary choroid. Fifteen days post-op, there still remained a small subretinal hemorrhage. The only part to be impregnated by fluorescein was the point of anchorage of the optic nerve head. The visual field map showed an interpapillomacular defect, clearly visible on the horizontal meridian of the sensitivity curve. Two months later, the hemorrhage had disappeared. The macular angiogram had returned to normal. The OCT as well. 
and the visual acuity had improved from less than 2100 to 2040. Two years post-op, the acuity has stabilized at 2030. The interest of presenting this unique case is to extend the indications for subretinal surgery beyond retromacular neovascular membranes.